you beautiful souls welcome back to my channel my name is michelle we talk all things life love spirituality law of attraction and all of that juicy goodness i'm an intuitive reader a manifesting coach a reiki practitioner and a life path guide and mentor here to help you along your awakening journey so that you can co-create the life of your dreams and in this video we're going to pull some cards and we're going to talk about a really strong message that i have been receiving recently and i think a lot of people are going through it as well and I don't want anyone suffering as well as myself. And I have been suffering. To be honest, I have been suffering. And I know a lot of psychic mediums and light workers and YouTubers, spiritual teachers, we're all going through this weird funk, feeling like we're just in this, like, I don't want to do anything. I'm tired. How can I show up for my community and for my clients when I don't feel good? So if you've been feeling this energy, it is natural. It is normal. It is like this wave that's coming through all of us that we're meant to experience. And one of my spiritual teachers told me that it's almost like when we feel disconnected and we don't feel magical and we don't feel inspirational and we're just not as vibrant and all we want to do is sleep. It's because our spirit, our soul is wanting to really be in our human body and really experience humanness. <laughs> and we're meant to be feeling the ego and questioning everything because we're going into the cocoon. We are transforming in this phase and we don't always see it. We don't always know that we're safe and that it's leading to somewhere safe. And I know for me, when I go through this, I always question it. I'm like, why don't I feel invigorated to do my work? I love my work. And right now, I mean, right now when I'm doing this, I love it. But like for the past month, I just don't want to work. I don't want to work with clients, even though I do. And it feels good when I'm on the call, and when I'm off the call, but leading up to it, there's just no energy. I feel like somebody has taken my spirit. So if you've been feeling that way too, it is natural. Our soul is going deep down into our human bodies, into this human experience. We're meant to feel the suffering and the pain that our ego creates because we're transforming in that process to become more aware of it. The more aware of the pain and the suffering we are and the unknown, and I don't know what's next, we can see that voice and we can surrender deeper into our trust and our faith in the universe. That is the whole purpose of you being in the funk is to say, I'm going to be in the funk and I don't know when I'm going to come out, but I'm going to trust it. <laughs> if I'm feeling it, then it's meant to be. That is the overall message I want you all to hear. If you're feeling it, then it's meant to be. Do not resist it. So basically, if you're resisting, like coming out of the body, coming out of the ego, coming out of all of that suffering, guess where your spirit is? Your spirit is in there. So you're resisting your spirit when you're doing that. So surrender into whatever you're feeling. If you don't want to work and you just feel like sleeping, I know it might sound crazy and it's a leap of faith, but honor that. Do as much as you can to rest and to listen to what you're being guided to do. And sometimes when there's nothing, there's no guidance, you're like, where did my intuition go? Where did my spirit guides go? I don't know what's going on. You're not meant to know. You're literally meant to just be in that anxiety and that fear and that worry and just be there because that is what strengthens your faith muscle. Because when something shifts and you wake up one day and you're back and your spirits are like in your body, but also connected to source again, and you're feeling inspirational, guess what you just learned? You just learned so much in that cocoon phase. The whole time you were squirming, trying to get out of it, trying to push out of it. This doesn't feel right. I don't know what's going on, but yet you were learning lessons and now you're out and now you're able to share so much and you feel different. You feel more vibrant. You feel more trusting. So when we have trust and when we have faith in our, in ourselves and in our nudges and in honoring our restful times, that's ultimate peace. You now have peace and you don't ever have to worry about the universe sending you something crazy. Cause you're like, Oh, I guess it's meant to be. If it's here, everything is always meant to be. If it's here, if it's happening, it's meant to be nothing is a regret. Nothing is lost. Nothing is a waste. Everything is here for us. 
So please be super, super kind to yourself. Rest as much as you can. If you're feeling lifeless and you don't want to do it anymore and you're done with this game of life and you're just like, oh, I can't handle this another minute. I don't know how this is going to play out. I don't have the energy to do it. It is temporary. You will not feel this way soon. Okay. Mine lasted a really long time and I'm finally starting to come out of it. I started to create some courses. I was brand new. I, I had been wanting to do it for a really long time. And all of a sudden, it's like my spirit jumped back into my body and was like, it's time. You're now energetically ready to put your energy onto these videos for people to learn more. So there might be something that's brewing inside of you that you can't quite see. And all of a sudden, you're going to wake up one day and you're just going to start doing it. Trust me, you will just wake up and you will start doing it. I am proof. It's happened so many times. I woke up and just decided I'm going to quit my job after 17 years. And I just did it. I sent my letter, sent my resignation, and it was done. I woke up one day and was like, I'm going to start YouTube. Woke up one day and just started to get my Reiki certification. Things, our spirit moves us. But when we're in the in-between and we're like, I don't know what we're supposed to be doing, that's because it's not time yet. And we have to keep surrendering into that cocoon phase and be like, all right, the butterfly doesn't know. The butterfly, the caterpillar doesn't know that it's going to be a butterfly. And we just have to keep surrendering and be like, all right, we're the caterpillar. We don't know what's next, but we can have faith that we're going to be flying and we're going to be beautiful and we're going to be vibrant and we're going to be more free. Okay, so that was the main message that I wanted to share with all of you. I got a couple DMs last night, woke up to a couple messages this morning about people who are really struggling with their depression and their anxiety because they can't find the urge to do anything. And I am here to say that you're in the right spot. You're safe, you're protected, and just know that when you get that urge to go for a walk or to cook something different, just take action on it. Just do that one small thing because that builds the momentum and it gets things going. My action when I came out of my cocoon recently was I just got this urge to revamp my website. It was like nine o'clock at night, wasn't planning on doing work that night, grabbed my laptop and I just started playing with different backgrounds, started changing the wording and momentum picked up. I ended up working till 2 a.m., and then I finally went to bed and woke up the next day. I was so excited to keep going. And then all of a sudden I started to film for some courses and I'm like, where was that for the last four months? So it just comes out of nowhere. So please trust yourselves, trust your heart, trust those nudges and grab the laptop and start doing the thing when you feel the urge to do it. My ego easily could have said, no, what's the point? Don't do that, Michelle. Don't grab the laptop. But it felt fun. It felt easy. It didn't feel like work. And I didn't even have that egoic voice saying that to me. That's how I know I can comfort all of you and say that you're not going to have the ego talking you out of it. You're going to feel good about doing your next steps. And if they're not here yet, they're coming. Okay. So now let's ask our angels and guides. And if you haven't heard, I did create two courses. I created a course on how to cleanse your energy and understanding energy. And I created another course called how to become an intuitive reader, where I teach you to tap into your intuition, how to meditate, how to listen to your guides and angels, and how to decipher what they're trying to tell you through everyday life in a reading, how to read cards. So go ahead over to my website, purchase those courses when you are ready and when you're feeling called. I will have them available super soon if they're not already up when you're watching this video. But let's get some messages, let's pull cards. As the intuitive reader that I am, I will give you examples on how to do this. So I brought out two of my older decks, can't remember the name. Um, my friend Elisa gifted me this deck. And one of my tips that I give in my course is that the decks find us. We're not meant to just go out and find decks, but they do come to us in a certain way. This is really funny. We have taking action. <laughs> taking action and opening up to love. I enthusiastically embrace life's boundless possibilities. So when you're feeling that energy of just like, I don't want to do anything, you don't feel boundless. You feel like there's no possibility and you're just like, I can't handle this another minute. I don't even want to live anymore. <laughs> Your spirit gets so dull and so like weak. And that's where I'm here to remind you that you're just in that phase. It's a transition. You're growing. It's called like a death and a rebirth. 
the caterpillar part of you has to die. And the action comes once the caterpillar is out of the cocoon. He can't take action when he's in it. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't even know what he is. And then this is, says, my, and this says, my heart is open. So being willing to saying yes to love, I feel like somebody might be taking action towards a loving partner or towards an opportunity to create a more passionate, fiery life for yourself. A lot of us are living in these numb relationships where we're not growing. When your spirit is not growing, you're going to feel depressed and sad and you're going to have anxiety. We crave growth as, as human beings, as souls in these bodies. When we're not growing, that's your cue to say, all right, I need a book to read. I need new content. I need to expand myself. So that's another tip too. If you are in this phase and maybe you're missing the mark and maybe you don't know this, know that your soul is always wanting to learn new things. And sometimes there's a phase where you want to turn off all computers and you don't want to read any books. You don't want to consume anything because you want to tune in and listen. But if there's no messages, you're not getting any downloads, then you might need content and books to read to get messages through that. And you're being called to go listen to something new because you're meant to learn something in that cocoon. So taking action could be putting yourself in a spot to open up your heart to that green ray energy. Your green ray is your heart chakra. And when we are moving into that fourth density consciousness, it's all heart-based. We're doing everything from the heart. We're taking action from the heart because it feels good. I always say when your heart's beating with joy, follow that. That's your cue to put on your sneakers and go for a walk, to cook that yummy meal because it makes your heart dance and it feels like relief and it feels good. So opening your heart to the actions, when your heart's beating with joy, take action on that idea. Let's get a message from your angels. I have Doreen Virtue's angel deck. Message from your angels. I have not used this deck in, gosh, months, maybe even a year. I was cleaning yesterday and I found it and I was like, oh my gosh, we have Mother Mary. <laughs> she is here to guide you. So feel free to call on Mother Mary when you're unsure about how to open up your heart to love. And I just heard forgiveness. Okay, so somebody, you might be having somebody coming in, taking action towards you, and they might be apologizing and saying, I'm so sorry, I was blind, I didn't see what I was doing, I'm so sorry, I, you got caught up in my shit and my, my wounding, and please forgive me. Mother Mary is like the ultimate you know, representation of forgiveness and compassion. So allow that kind of source energy to, to like pour through your veins when somebody comes to you with an apology. Know that you are this higher being and you're not a wounded ego. That is not who you are. You're going to the higher perspective and you're seeing how this person, they weren't open to love at the time. They didn't understand it. They were in their ego. They were, you know, their ego was just trying to grip on to love in certain places. Maybe they cheated. Maybe they lied. Maybe they ghosted you. Maybe they ignored you. Maybe they didn't want to face who they were. So now they're opening up to love and they're seeing you were it all along. And that now they're calling in for forgiveness and they're coming in for forgiveness. Let's get one more message. A lot of times a manifestation, whether it's a special person or money, it comes in after that long cocoon phase that I was talking about earlier. You know, you get thrown into this turmoil point where you're like depressed and you feel like nothing good is ever coming. And then the universe drops you your manifestation. You already know. Let's get confirmation on this. Spirit, what do we already know? We're going to use Micah Magic. What do we already know? Yep, manifestation. It's exactly what I just said. You know that when you're in this energy, a manifestation is coming. So you can also rest in that energy and be like, okay, I meant to not know what's next. I'm changing jobs. I don't have money coming in. I don't have clients. I don't know what's going on. All I want to do is sleep or I'm sick or I have this ailment. Trust it all. You're meant to be there because you're being prepared to receive something. And your nervous system has to be ready 
to receive desires like that because your old conditioning would sabotage it. Your old conditioning would say, I'm not worthy of this. I, I don't know how to receive. So now you're opening up to love. Love is the universe. You're opening up to the universe saying, I receive all of your gifts. I am finally worthy. I know I am. I've done all the work. I've done all the healing. It is my turn to receive. Maybe Mother Mary is just here to say that, yeah, you are worthy and you forgot your worth. Oh, I love this. A past loved one is here. Maybe the past loved one is going to be bringing you some sort of inheritance or windfall or guidance on how to open yourself up to the, you guys hear my fridge? It's making a very funny noise, but they're saying like, hey, I'm going to bring you what you need. Talk to me. I love when I get that card. Side note, I just can't even tell you how much I love this deck. If you guys are not familiar, this is my Micah Magic deck. I created it in memory of my daughter. It's a manifestation deck. Um, so beautiful. Uh, it's available bottom of the deck. We have 1111 Twin Flame. So this person could be coming back. It's available on my website. Go check it out. It's less than $33. I think it's 32 something. The website that creates my cards, they kind of make me price it a certain way. Um, so I have it priced so that I make the least amount of money on it because I wanted to make it as cheap as possible for all of you to have in your homes to use. So go purchase it. It's on makeplayingcards.com, which is linked below. But I love this deck because you can pull 10 to 15 cards and it tells a story. And I always say that, but I never pull the 10 to 15 cards for you all. I always do it for myself. So this twin flame energy is don't settle. You have more depth inside of you and your person has such a depth inside of them that you're a match. You can't be with people who you can't lay in bed with and talk about the little things about yourself. You need to be with somebody who wants to grow their soul. So when you're with a twin flame, it's going to feel like you're literally looking at yourself and you're looking at all of your habits and your patterns and all the parts of yourself that you don't like. You're seeing it in somebody else. So it forces you to unconditionally love yourself because you have another human being in front of you doing everything you do. And now you can see, oh my gosh, I'm going to find compassion for them where before maybe I was judgmental about something, but they're showing me the thing that I was judgmental about, I'm actually doing, and I didn't see it until I saw it in them. So they are such a beautiful mirror to the things that we can't see about ourselves. And it's hard to be in partnership with twins because you're such, it's such an energy dynamic that's different from soulmates and regular partnerships um, because it's you. So if you don't love yourself, you literally repel your other, your other whole or your other half. Yeah, so you have to be super mindful of your thoughts. If you get into ego and start to judge and compare, or you start to have guilt or shame or self-doubt, that pushes the other person away. You have to completely surrender the ego and say, I'm not going to think these thoughts anymore. I love myself. And when I focus on me and my body and my health and my mission, that's when my twin is just with me living life because we both are focused on ourselves and not codependent on each other. Dream job is on the way. I just heard twins are gonna be working together. You have a mission together. That is the whole purpose of why we need to learn to love ourselves is because when we're in partnership with our twin, we elevate the planet. We bring more love to the planet. And you have to be mindful of the ego and how it tries to wreck you and keep you in separation. The ego thinks you're separate from source. So say, I always talk about in all of my manifestation videos, pretend like source and God and the universe is like a human body. We're the extension of it. We're the arms, we're the legs, we're the toes. So we're all a part of it. So you guys are a part of that body too. So if I, if I Michelle, as an extension of source, hurt myself or hurt somebody else, I'm hurting you. I'm hurting source. I'm hurting everybody. That's why they call it a collective because we're all a part of this one thing. It's called oneness. So if I am not loving myself, that means I'm not loving my, my twin. 
I'm not loving all of you. So forgiveness, compassion, love. I say it all the time in all of my videos. If you're not in that energy, you're an ego and you're in separation. You're thinking that you're a separate being from the source energy, the I am presence. So in order to get back into that I am presence, we fall into I am connected. I am an extension of source. My job is to just love people. My job is just accept myself, accept my path, become the creator. So you have to know yourself, you have to accept yourself, and then you have to become the creator. So if you're not doing those three things, you are an ego and you're separate from yourself and you're going to be separate from your, your special person. And it's almost going to be impossible for you to connect with somebody who is also connected to source in that, in that higher way, because you're then going to attract somebody who's an ego because you're an ego. Okay. So always remember that dream job is on the way. Maybe you're meant to be teaching this stuff to other people too. Switch up your routines. I got this the other day on my Instagram. It was the message of the day. So when we get switch up your routines, I always think of if you are in a funk, if you do have anxiety, if you do have depression and it's just there, right? It's not who you are. It's just a wave of energy that's passing through you. One way to shift that is to change your routines, you know, put on different shoes, don't wear the same things, go to different restaurants, go to different stores. You have to throw a wrench into your entire life and do everything so different to break the pattern. Because at this point, when you're consistently feeling a certain way, your body's just in habit mode. It's now remembering, oh, we wake up and feel this way. So we're going to continue to feel this way. And you don't want that pattern and habit to continue. You want to throw a wrench into it and see how you can create the shift yourself. So when I get this card, that means somebody out there is on a wheel. You're literally just cycling through and feeling so like habitual. You're just doing the same thing and your body's remembering the same feelings and the same emotions. And if they're not good ones, you're on a cycle. So it's time to get out of that. I'm also here to tell you that I tried that. I tried switching routines because I know all of this and I know how to get myself out of that loop. And I wasn't on a loop. I literally was just in this wave of collective energy of, I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know why I feel this way. So be patient with yourself if you have tried to switch your routines and nothing has worked. But if you haven't, it might work for you. A new partner proposal next level in love. That speaks for itself. Let's get some cards from my very first deck, the ever unfolding heart. Crocodile. You are being called to let go of the timing of things. You must wait for the universe to move things for you. You will wake up one day and it will be time. This was the theme of this whole reading. <laughs> when you don't have the urge yet, it's not time yet. Okay. So the crocodile kind of sits and he waits under the water and he's kind of waiting to attack or he's waiting to take action. You'll know when the time is right. And that new partner might be waiting for that right time. Okay, let's finish off this reading with my purple angel deck. So many of you have asked about this deck and what the name is. I don't know. A client sent it to me without the box or the book or anything. So maybe I'll reach out to her to see what the name of this deck is. And I'm sure I could probably look it up by the photo somehow or, the, or Google one of the cards and it might pop up. It's such a cute little tiny deck though. I love it. See only love. It says, look, look past the seeming errors, mistakes, and misunderstandings and see only the love within each person, including yourself. <laughs> this is exactly the same message. Your resolute focus upon the love that, that underlies every situation brings about healing in undreamed of ways. Oh, I love that. And look, she's holding a heart with wings. It's opening up to love. Same energy. Look past the seeming errors, mistakes, and misunderstandings and see only the love within each person, including yourself. Your resolute focus upon the love that underlies every situation brings about healing in undreamed of ways. So this is signifying that somebody really, really might have been hurt 
and we're looking for awesome forgiveness here. We're looking for deep, deep compassion. And we don't go back to situations that are harmful, right? Like we can forgive it, but we don't go back to it because if they're not changing and they're not stopping their patterns and they're continuing to do those things, that's a different story. We don't go back to that. We are only offering compassion and forgiveness. Well, we're always offering compassion and forgiveness, but we're only going to be staying with somebody or welcoming somebody back in if their behavior is different. And sometimes we don't know until we give them a try. So the crocodile saying somebody's waiting to come back in and your job is to see the love behind their words and behind their actions. Actions are a big piece. Do not just take something by word of mouth because we don't know until somebody shows us with their behaviors. All right, lovies, I am sending you so much love. I hope you enjoyed this message. Don't forget the beginning part of this reading. You are exactly where you're meant to be. Just keep honoring yourself. Keep resting as much as you can. If you feel like you can't play this game of life anymore, you can. This is where your soul grows. Your soul learns, you learn as the human that your soul is in charge. And it's guiding you to feel this way because it's going to make sense later. Trust me, every single time it happens and you're going to continually go through these deaths and rebirths. You feel like you're dying and you feel like it's over, but then you get this surge and you get that little manifestation or you get that little urge to do something and momentum picks up and then you're good again, but it's always going to happen. Okay. So we got to get used to these cycles. This is our new way of life. A lot of us have been living this way for a really long time. Some of us have not noticed it. <laughs> um, and some of us are just starting to experience it. So for those of you who are just on the journey and just learning about these deaths and rebirths, track it in a journal. It's going to help you immensely to see how long you've been in this funk and how long it took you to get out of it. And then in a year or two, when it happens again, you're gonna be like, okay, I remember feeling this way. I don't need to stress. I eventually came out of it and it wasn't in my control. Okay, so surrender, surrender, surrender. All right, lovies, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I will see you in the next one. All right, peace out.